us travel. Like that's the plan.
bells ring are you listening in the lane snow is glistening a beautiful sight we're happy tonight walking in a winter wonderland gone away is the bluebird here to stay is the new bird he sings a love song as we go along walking in a winter wonderland in the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that he is parson brown he'll say are you married we'll say no man but you can do the job if you're in town later on will conspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland yeah!
crown, love in the air, the sleigh bells are ringing. This is what it's all about. The fire is warm, the angels are singing. I don't wanna miss a single thing. Don't wanna put into all this shit. But as long as you're with me, it's always the time of the year. You make every day feel like it's Christmas. Feeling like the first thing on your wish list. I can't deny what I'm feeling inside. Nothing fake about the way you bring me to life. You make every day feel like it's Christmas. Every day that I'm with you. Look at the lights, twinkling bright, 24 7. Every inch of Central Park is covered in white, and this could be heaven. I don't wanna miss a single thing, don't wanna put into all this shit. But as long as you're with me, it's always the time of the
perspective, the lens in which we view life, and maybe more importantly, God's role in our life. What perspective do we view our past, present, and future through? Where do our thoughts go when we think about each of those specific parts of our journey? Scripture tells us, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. There's a beautiful message we are reminded of this time of year. The birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, brings every piece from our past, every detail happening in our present, in all the unknown and uncertainty of our future together to paint this picture we never would have been able to create on our own accord. Those of us struggling to let go of our past, scripture says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Those of us whose thoughts are consumed with every earthly thing we encounter day in and day out, scripture says, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Those of us who struggle with the future of tomorrow, next week, and maybe even next month may have in store for us, Jesus says, I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Christmas, the birth of the one who overcame the world perspective, letting every piece of our past, present, and future fall into place until we ourselves are the picture of his unending grace, the extraordinary work of art he's been painting our whole life. A mind fixed on worshiping God is impenetrable to the lies of the enemy. To gaze upon Jesus, the King of Kings, born in a lowly manger, is to put every way we see our past, present, and future in its proper perspective.
to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men this song. Welcome everybody to our online campus. Merry Christmas. We're so glad to have you with us today. And there's so many things you could be doing. Thank you for taking time to celebrate the birth of Jesus with all of us here in the Pure Heart family. We want to welcome everyone from around the world, around the country, around the state of Arizona and Crossroads Recovery. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of our service as well. If I had to guess... I would say that you're all probably a little bit tired right now. And the reason is because there's only one word that can describe what we do to ourselves the first three weeks of December every single year. And that word is madness. Like, think about it, madness. We cram 80% of all the parties we're going to have in the whole year long in a three-week period. We redecorate our entire house inside and out, and then we take it all down in like a three, four-week period. Period. And then we buy something for everybody we've ever met. We bake every cookie we've ever heard of. And then we consume, this is my favorite part, three times the number of calories we would in a three-month period. We do that in a two-week period. And just for fun, let's all pose for a family fight. I mean, a family photo. And then to put an exclamation point on this season, let's let the kids out of school for two whole weeks. So I want you to begin this Christmas Eve message with all of us just taking a deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's just relax because in the next few minutes, um, there, this may be the only time this Christmas season you can slow down long enough to think about why does Christmas really matter? I wanna invite you, invite you right now to seize the moment, to, to focus on the fact that God really wants your attention. There's this moment in the Bible when Father God's heart is broken over the brokenness and the weariness of his people. And with a true father's heart, he says these words through the, prop, the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter three and verse 12. He says this to his people. He says, oh, my people, come home to me. You see, friends, we belong to God. We, we were never meant to belong to our job or our career, to our past, or even to our past regrets. We were never meant to belong to the expectations of others. We were created to belong to God because we were created by him and our souls at home only when we connect and come home 
to him, I was talking to one of the amazing ladies that prays between services and during services at our Glendale campus the other day, and she was telling me a little bit about what God put on her heart about this beautiful little girl, Olivia, that we have now had the privilege of adopting. She came into our home a year ago now, and she was born on fentanyl, born on drugs. She spent the first 29 days of her life in ICU. Matter of fact, she spent last Christmas in a NICU in a hospital here in the greater Phoenix area. And by the grace of God today, she's now home with Nicole and I and our family. And she's become one of the greatest joys of our life. She's no longer a ward of the state. Olivia this year has a home. Uh, and matter of fact, we just found out that my son and daughter-in-law are going to have a baby in June. So when she's a year and a half old, Olivia will become an aunt. Get your mind around that for just a moment. And this lady said to me, one of our prayer team members, she said to me, she goes, you know, Pastor, the Lord asked me a while back. He just put this thought in my heart. He said, he said to me, did you see what I did for Olivia? He said, I, I rescued her. I saved her. She's a, she's a miracle. And then I put her in a place that I had prepared for her. And when we think about that statement, when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, we think of Jesus talking to his disciples about heaven. But God play, prepares places for us right here on earth. He prepares homes for us here on earth. Listen to Father God's heart in Psalms 27, verse 10. It says, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Psalm 68, verse 6 says it this way, God places the lonely in families. You see, God's heart is to bring us home to him this Christmas. That's the heart of God. And let me show you this heart in the Christmas story. I saw this this last year, a couple months ago, and I was like, I never really caught this before. So in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, go with me for just a moment. Let me show you what the Holy Spirit showed me about this Christmas story that I've missed many, many times. It says this, at that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. So the entire known world at that time, the Roman Empire, Augustus declares a census. And now watch what happens with the census. That all should return to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. Watch this. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. Say that with me. David's ancient home. I find it fascinating. That at the birth of Jesus, Father God moves the heart of the world to go back to their hometowns, which I believe foreshadowed, listen to me closely, Jesus' ultimate purpose, to bring all of us home. That is his goal. Think about this. Joseph traveled with Mary down the path to his hometown to give birth to Jesus, who is our path home. Can I just say that one more time? that Joseph traveled with Mary down the path to his hometown to give birth to Jesus, who is our path home. Now, coming home permeates everything in this season. Uh, we sing about it. You know, I'll be home for Christmas. I promise I won't do that again the rest of this message, all right? All of the Hallmark movies are about... She's a powerful executive in a law firm and she goes to her little hometown where she grew up and her whole life changes and she gets back to what matters. And we love these movies, we love these songs and it's all about coming home. And even the news media, think about this, even the news media takes a break from its slanted opinions about everything and tells p stories of people coming home for Christmas. And besides that, we still laugh at all those Home Alone movies, even though we've watched them a thousand times over and over again. And personally, personally, my favorite, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, the TV version, by the way. Okay, I'd be more righteous, the TV version. I resonate with Clark Griswold, his desire to have his whole family home. I remember, I love the line in the movie where the guy that he works with looks at Clark and goes, you're the last true family man, Clark. I feel that way. I want my family together. And there's no place like home, but... We also know this, home can be far, far, far from perfect. Can I get it? Mm-hmm. From anybody this Christmas Eve. The truth is, in the, our homes, there's often conflict. Uh, there's disappointment. There's unfulfilled expectations. And by the way, do all of our relatives get along? No, they do not. Let me give you some quotes from Clark Griswold, some of my favorite. Surprised, Eddie? If I woke up tomorrow with my head sewn to the carpet, I wouldn't be more surprised. Hey, Eddie, can I refill your eggnog, get you something to eat, drive you out to the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead? <laughs> Hallelujah, where's the Tylenol? Am I one of my favorites? We needed a coffin? I, I mean a tree, right? 
We know that Clark was losing his mind with his family coming together. And here's my favorite part. Nobody's walking out on this old fashioned fun family vacation. No, no, we're all in this together. If you're with somebody today watching this, just turn to him right now and go, no, no, no. We are in this together. Now, the hardest part about home is that often our homes change. They just don't stay the same. Those, those babies that were born, um, they grow up and they move out, or at least we pray they do eventually, right? We hope. But sometimes they don't just move out. They move far away. And then they have babies that we don't get to see except on FaceTime. And harder yet, there's times that those that we love dearly go home to heaven. And some maybe lived a long life and there's just a hole in our heart this Christmas season, but some went home to heaven far too early. And this Christmas particularly may be hard for some of you because you're missing someone that was here last Christmas. Now, I wanna show us today two reasons why I believe that the Father, Father God's heart comes out in this Christmas story. Two things that God is so passionate about and why he wants to bring us home. Now, here we go. The first is found in Luke chapter 2 in verse 10 through 11 and then verses 13 and 14. This is the encounter that shepherds have with the angel. And listen to what the angels say to the shepherds on that hillside the night that Jesus was born. It says this, I bring you good news. The angel was like, don't, don't be afraid. He says, I bring you good news that will bring great joy. Everybody say joy. Bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Now watch this. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven. And here's our word. Peace. Say it with me. Peace. Peace on earth to those with whom God is. Is pleased. And it's so amazing to me that what we lack the most this time of year, that was what this time of year was originally all about, is peace. What we lack the most is peace. We're struggling to find that peace. So, first off, the two things I want to share with you on this Christmas story this year is first, Jesus came to make his home in us and bring us, I'll say it this way, and give us his peace. His peace when our homes get rocked to the core. Now, come with me for just a moment. We're going to join one of our amazing families in our church, and we're going to join our worship team, and we're going to really dive into a powerful, powerful story of God's peace coming into very, very broken circumstances. Let's go check this out together. So our family was rocked to the core on July 18th of 2022 when our beloved daughter-in-law, Rachel, went home to be with the Lord. She was 29 years old, the wife of our eldest son, Greg, and the mother of our dear grandchildren, ages two and six. And words cannot describe how this has affected our family. I can tell you that she was the most loving wife that a parent could expect, wonderful mother, and probably one of the greatest activists of the cause of Christ or the kingdom of God that I've ever known. Rachel was my sister-in-law and we had a very special relationship. Um, I did not have a sister growing up, and so um, just being able to go to a sister, go to a best friend for everything um, just was such a special bond. Her and my brother were together for married nine years, together for 11 years, so we knew each other for uh, a long time. Something that I realized was that it was really hard for me to pray. I just did not have the motivation to pray but I knew that other people could pray for me and for my family. And so it just took us being real and being vulnerable and reaching out to our community. And God had showed up in just the right moments. There were times where we would go into something really, really difficult, um, whether it was a viewing or Rachel's funeral, and people had text, texted us in just the right moments that they were praying for us. 
Uh, even my brother would say that he could feel God's presence every time someone prayed. And so just the healing through our community and through our family has been just so, I can't even explain the peace that it has brought to us. Him knowing how upset and hurt and, you know, I, I went through all the phases. I still still struggle with um, the pain, the grief, and then being mad, um, mad at God um, for taking Rachel, mad at Rachel for going, because I know that as soon as she saw Jesus, she she ran and she left in his arms. I know it. I see it. And then I feel guilty because why wouldn't she? And why wouldn't I be happy that she's there? Selfishly, you know, I want her here with us, with her kids, with my son. But the fact that he has assured me that she is no longer in pain and suffering and that everyone here will be well, that he still got us and cares for us. I just cling to that. There's a truth I know when all around is shaking. There's a song my soul will sing When all is fading, I believe I'm gonna see your glory Jesus, my hope I'm standing on your word my so inspired by the Nurger family, especially their son, Greg, the passing of his wife and their willingness to share their story and what they've walked through. And they've truly experienced the peace of God. And that was the first thing I wanted us to understand this Christmas Eve, that God brings us home to his peace, that through the birth of his son, we are promised peace, peace in our brokenness of circumstances, the, the areas of our lives where we feel like are the most uh, broken or falling apart. He's able to put that back together in such an amazing powerful way. But then there's another level of hope that we have, this hope that this home, this life that we know now is not God's final answer. And so the great joy that the Nurker family has is that they know they'll see Rachel again. And Jesus has this ability to not just bring peace into our current homes, He has the ability to bring us all home to His permanent home where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, absolute hope and joy. Here's the second part of their story. You know, I tend to grieve differently. I've noticed this about myself. 
My mother actually passed away early in 2022 as well. And my process is such that I just have always known that death is part of life. And as a believer and knowing how much Rachel loved the Lord, I just know that she is where she wanted to be and where she should be. And for me, there's a, a lot of solace in that. There's a lot of healing, a lot of, of just excitement about being able to be reunited with her and my mom someday. We know this is temporary. We know that our future is with Jesus and with uh, Rachel again and my mother-in-law and other past um, loved ones. And that is very hopeful. It <laughs> gives us a lot of hope and um, comfort for sure. My favorite part about Jesus and who he is, is that he is sitting at the right hand of God and he is interceding on our behalf every single day. And he just wants to be near us. He wants to be in relationship with us. Jesus has suffered and he has grieved and he has gone through pain and loss just like you and me. And he is so relatable. He knows what we are going through and he just wants us to be vulnerable and he wants us to be real. The verse that I have clung on to in this season is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He is near you, He is close, and He just wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to bring peace into our current home, in our current circumstances. And then Jesus has this great promise that he has the ability to bring us all home, that this life is not God's final answer. We will all be reunited. Again, that's the joy, that's the hope of the Christmas story, that the Father's heart is to be close to us. As Alyssa said in her story there at the very end, she says, he just wants to be near you. He comes near 
to the brokenhearted. And I know in an audience this large and people watching all around the world, there's gonna be many, many people that this Christmas, you just feel like giving up. Uh, you feel like maybe walking away. Maybe you feel like giving up on a marriage. Or maybe for some of you, you feel like giving up on even being married. Maybe you feel like giving up on a child, on a job, on a dream. Maybe you feel like giving up on, you're wrestling with an addiction and you're just like, I don't know how to overcome this. I just keep going around the same mountain over and over again. And you just wanna give up, you wanna walk away. But God says, no, 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 don't do that. Come home to me. Just come home to me. That's what he wants you to know. Because here's what God brought you here today to tell you. He brought you here this Christmas to remind you that he's in love with you and that he wants to help you. Christmas proves that. He came into our broken world because he loved us and wanted to be close to us. And he came into our broken world to help us. Nicole and I, as I said earlier in this message, have had the joy of raising this beautiful little baby, this little miracle this last year, Olivia. And there's been some moments in this last year where we wondered if Olivia would maybe not be able to be with us, that she would leave us, that she would be taken from our home. And it was, it was hard and difficult moments and overwhelmed moments. Any of you who have fostered a child or been a, a guardian of a child or maybe you've um, been through an adoption situation, that child was removed from your care, it's heartbreaking. And for me, my heart got so attached to this beautiful little girl. And so there was a moment a few months ago and we kind of wondered, uh-oh, does this mean that Olivia won't be able to be with us? And I was crushed. I was, I felt emotions I don't know if I've ever felt before and I was heartbroken and I was sorrowful and I went into her nursery and I was sitting in the chair and I was just, I was just weeping. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, why, why do I feel this way? Why? Originally when we took on this a great adventure, it was like, let's just provide a safe place. Let's provide a care and nurture for however long, God, you allow her to stay with us. And now why am I in this point where I'm going, I don't want to lose her. Why do I feel this way? What is going on, God? And the, the Lord just whispered to me, it's because I've put my father's heart in you. I've given you just a glimpse, Dan, of my father's heart. And then this was the thought that came into my mind. If I, as an earthly father, a flawed, imperfect human father, if I can love a child like this, do I feel like she's my very own? How much more does Father God feel about you? He loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, the joy of being home with him forever. Come home to his love tonight. Come home to his peace tonight. Come home to his hope that he has a plan and that this life's problems and even this life is not his final answer. So if you're ready tonight, maybe for the first time in your life, you're ready to say yes to Jesus, yes to his love, yes to his hope, to come home to him, maybe for the first time, or maybe today it's just a rededication of your life to Christ. You've been doing your own thing, going your own way, but here you are this Christmas and God is calling you home. So if that's you and you're ready to come home to Jesus, would you pray this with me right now? Just say this in your own heart, Lord Jesus, right now in this moment, I commit my life to you. I come home to your love. I come home to your forgiveness. I come home to your hope. I come home to your strength. Fill me with your presence, Lord. Fill me with your peace in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. If you just made that decision, we are so excited for you. Thank you for inviting Jesus into your life. And we wanna walk with you. Would you please let us know that you made that decision today so we can encourage you in your relationship with Jesus. Thank you for being with us this Christmas and pray that you join us on Christmas Day. I've put together a devotional straight from my heart uh, on Christmas Day that'll be available on Sunday on Christmas Day. And then we hope to see you online or if you're in the Phoenix area at one of our campuses the first of the year. God bless you. I pray that you have a great Christmas. So thank you for being part of our Christmas Eve services here at Pure Art Church's online campus. If you're new or just accepted Christ, we would love to get to know you. Yeah, just open a new tab on your browser and visit pureheart.org slash online connect. Our goal really is to bridge the gap from just a view to an actual conversation and provide the opportunities and tools we have available for you and your family as you seek God's heart and purpose for your life. Yeah, and as we're ending this year, looking back over the last 12 months and 
I've, I've really been amazed and I go, man, there's so many ways that God's used this church to make a difference around the world in so many ways. There are thousands of people engaging on these online services every weekend from 50 states, but then also from people connecting to these services from 176 countries. That's over 175,000 views last year. That is amazing. You know, we've also celebrated with almost 400 people who have chosen to follow Jesus during our services, both online and in person. And over 170 adults and students combined who've publicly declared their faith in Jesus by baptism. This year alone, our LifeBridge Resource Center assisted over 100,000 individuals through our on-campus centers, neighborhood drop-in events, and even extending onto the Navajo Nation. So cool. In addition, your generosity, it provided over 350 Thanksgiving meals to families who are struggling this year. Those are ones throughout the community. You also provided school supplies and clothes and other necessities to more than 100 kids through our Back to School event. And as we continue to make an impact with our 10 partnering Phoenix area, elementary and middle schools. We're just getting to serve more and more throughout the year. And this is just one piece of the overwhelming impact we're getting to see on a national scale with School Connect, who's seeing these kind of results multiplied across the U.S. You know, our Monday night support groups see nearly 150 individuals weekly and about 700 clients connected to intensive outpatient programs provided by Crossroads right here on our Glendale campus. With the support of this community, we have also continued to address issues of mental health and wellness, providing over 200 individuals with the access to licensed therapists through the Fullerton Scholarship and by our on-hand pastoral counseling. Love it. And there's, this is just a glimpse of what God's enabled us as a community to do. And that's really thanks to the generosity from so many of you. We have all together been able to make a difference in this world with the presence of Jesus in many tangible ways. Mm -hmm. And this Sunday, don't forget, this Christmas day, we actually have also just a brief devotional from Pastor Dan for you and your family, which will be available to watch on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. It'll premiere also on our Pure Heart website, our regular Sunday service times. You know, God is nowhere near finished. We are ready and expectant for all He is going to do in 2023. We pray you and your family are deeply blessed as we celebrate the gift above all other gifts, Jesus Christ. Have, Have a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.